All right, we're going to talk about the formation of a partnership. And we've got two trial, post-closing trial balances for the Williams Company, sole proprietorship, and the Jones Company, sole proprietorship. And these two are going to come together and join forces and become a partnership called the uh, YJO Company. Um, so these are the, the trial balances for both companies, but the valuation of the non-cash assets uh, are slightly different amounts. Um, so what they've done is they've had appraisers come in and appraise these different assets. So when you come together, uh, it doesn't matter what you had written on your books uh, when you were a sole proprietorship, we're going to basically bring things in at their appraised value. So for the first requirement, prepare separate journal entries to record the transfer of each proprietorship's assets and liabilities to the partnership. So let's do that. The uh, first journal entry, we're going to show Williams Company. Williams is contributing 14700 or 14277 Williams is also giving accounts receivable. However, uh, let's look down here. The valuation is the same. No, it's, yes, it is. It's the same. Okay, so we're going to debit accounts receivable for 17329 Then uh, we'll do all the debits first. The inventory... Uh, is valued at 27,536. So that is what we're going to debit for inventory is 27,536. And the equipment is valued at 21,150. Now you'll notice the equipment minus accumulated depreciation is on the balance sheet of Williams, but when we bring in the equipment to the partnership, it's like a brand new asset to them. So the accumulated depreciation account doesn't carry over. Uh, and so we're going to debit equipment for the amount that it was appraised at, which is 21150 Now let's look at the credits. The allowance for doubtful accounts is slightly different. Uh, it was thirty four ninety eight on Williams books, but we're increasing it to forty four sixty one ADA is my abbreviation for that. Evidently, there's some in there. This was a conservative estimate, uh, and so we've increased it. Uh, then the note payable seventeen thousand six twenty eight and that doesn't uh, have to be appraised because that is uh, what's going to be collected and then the accounts payable so basically Williams owed money on a note and on account and the partnership is taking those on so Williams capital is the difference between the assets and uh, the basically the debits and the credits, assets and liabilities, which is thirty six thousand three seventy three. Okay. By the way, this was the journal entry on one one twelve. Okay. Now we have another journal entry on one one twelve, and that is for the contribution of. Jones Company. So I just saw that I'm a little crunched on space here, so I'm going to start this entry up here. Jones is contributing 12,108 cash. Accounts receivable was 25,970. The valuation here is the same. So 25,970. The inventory 
Their cost for inventory was 18833 but the valuation down here is a little bit more, 20476 So, you know, whatever they had purchased, evidently the price has gone up because it's a little more valuable. The equipment, we're going to net out. Uh, we're not going to put in the accumulated depreciation. We're going to go with 16474 because that's the appraised value. The allowance for doubtful accounts was... 4,041, it's been increased to 4,443. And then we have the note payable, which is 15,403. The account payable for 30,926. And the difference is Jones capital which is 24,256. So basically I added the assets or the debits, subtracted these three and got the credit, the amount that goes to Joan uh, to Jones. Okay, B basically refers to um, this. Uh, it says all cash will be transferred to the partnership. And the partnership will assume all the liabilities of the two proprietorships. Okay, that actually relates to A. Further, it is agreed that Williams will invest an additional 4,977 in cash, and Jones will invest an additional 17,154 in cash. So, we've made this journal entry: cash, 4,977 debit, credit Williams Capital, 4,977. And then for Jones, 17,154 is what Jones is going to contribute, and Jones's capital is going to increase by 17,154. Okay, the third requirement uh, tells us to do a balance sheet. And so let's do our heading. So we've got Wajo Company balance sheet January 1, 2012. We're going to do a classified balance sheet, which means we're going to split our current assets out from our long-term assets. So our first current asset is cash. Now, what is the balance in cash? Probably the easiest way to determine this is to just do a little T account. So I'm going to come over here, off to the side, and let's just post all of our journal entries to the T account. So here we have a debit for 14277, another debit for 12108, then a debit for 4977, and a debit for 17154. Add those up, and we have 48516. So that is the amount of my cash, 48516. Now accounts receivable, basically go back and add the debit of 17329 and the debit of 25970 to get accounts receivable of 43299 less the allowance for doubtful accounts. And the allowance for doubtful accounts, 4461 plus 4443 gives us 8904. So that's going to be subtracted. And I see that I've kind of messed up my columns here. For clarity purpose, what we'll do is I'll put these uh, accounts receivable less the ADA so that the net realizable receivables um, is 34.395. Okay. Then we've also got uh, our inventory. And the inventory 
is the sum of 27,536 and 20,476. So that amount is 48,012. And that is going to give us total current assets of 130,923. And then we'll have property, plant and equipment. That's the heading. And the equipment is the total of 21,150 and 16,474. So that is 37,624. And that gives us total assets. If you add the current and the long term, 168,547. Okay, so we have liabilities and owner's equity, current liabilities, we have notes payable, which is the sum of 17,628 and 15,403, which is 33,031. We have accounts payable. which is the sum of 21,830 and 30,926. So that is 52,756. So total current liabilities, 85,787. So Williams Capital is the sum of 36,377, that's 41,350. Jones's Capital, 24,256, 17,154, so that's 41,410, that's pretty darn close. They don't have to be, but they just happen to be. So total owner's equity is 82,760. And I put a line under there so that I'm adding 85,787 plus my 87,760 and I get 168,547. Two lines under that. And of course that equals my total assets so I know I'm in balance. Perfect.